Love ain't always what it's cracked up to be. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst couples on 90 Day Fiancé. After you want something, you're gonna want something else. And after you get that, you're gonna want something else. Yeah. Like, there's never gonna be an end to it. Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at the worst couples to ever appear on 90 Day Fiancé and its spin-offs. It's all good. No, it's not okay. all good. I am cooking a steak, cook and all you do is this. <laughs> You ruin everything. Number 10. Colt and Larissa. When you don't say that I would like to take advantage of Colt to just love, because advantage, what? Colt's not millionaire. Colt having a car with your, no, no air conditioner. So what kind of advantage are you taking? These two lovebirds met online and quickly developed a rapport after traveling to Mexico to meet in person. However, it didn't take long before Colt and Larissa were bickering over the little things, the big things, and ultimately everything. Larissa's jealousy would rear its ugly head every time Colt spoke to another woman, famously calling him an attention whore after he made a remark about another woman's glasses. I'm really tired you act like attention whore, Colt. You need to talk to other women. Please stop to give compliments to a stranger woman. Hey, can I talk to you? Oh, you need, I love my eyes. Stop it. Oh, glasses. That's what I said. She even claimed on social media that it seemed like he's married to his mom, who lives with them, instead of her. Seeing as how these two are currently heading for a divorce, based in part on Larissa's numerous arrests for alleged domestic abuse, we think it's safe to say this 90 Day Fiancé couple won't be showing up on 90 Day Fiancé happily ever after. That is the flowers, Colt. Yep, those are the flowers. So? I'm not going to buy you $20 from flowers with a $20? Yeah. Number nine, Molly and Luis. But for me, I think it's kind of like when people saw Pam Anderson on Baywatch, like running down the beach. If you flip that to a man, oh yeah. <laughs> He's hot. We don't think it's a stretch to say that this couple was doomed from the beginning. 26-year-old Luis met 41-year-old Molly while the latter was vacationing with friends in the Dominican Republic. Upon returning with her to the U.S., Luis failed to make a positive impression with Molly's kids, hardly seeming to care about them one way or the other. He regularly made his wife-to-be cry, and in one instance made an inappropriate comment to her daughter Olivia. You want to him just for love? No marriage, no, not just even for thinking. Sleep with him, just for what? Yes. Oh, and let's not forget the infamous bachelor party. Luis was definitely paying too much attention to those strippers. Luis and Molly are now divorced, with the former remarrying in 2018. Number 8. Mark and Nikki If you thought the last couple had a serious age gap, wait till you get a load of these two. You look pretty good in it. Thank you so much, but I need to learn how to drive. <laughs> well, no, you can drive me home. 58-year-old Mark met 19-year-old Nikki on an online dating site, and it wasn't long before she moved from the Philippines to live in America with him. The real problem in this relationship was Mark. You don't touch the window, because you have to clean them, man. You, you're making trouble. Do you want me to be happy, Nikki? Did you want... Nikki, you're messing with... N Nikki, you're messing with my happiness. I... I, I can't wipe it. I'm in my no, clothes. No, 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 no. Not only was he controlling, going so far as to make Nikki sign a prenuptial agreement that a lawyer called a piece of garbage, but he tried to pawn his own daughter's clothes off on her, which even his daughter thought was super creepy. This relationship was about as one-sided as a relationship can be, and for that, it earns a spot on our list. Are you marrying your best oh, friend? Uh, I'm marrying a weird guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's mar she's marrying my dad. Oh, I'm marrying her dad, I mean. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, he is weird. Number seven, Chantel and Pedro. We can sum up this relationship in one word, family. Now, usually that would be a good thing, but in the case of Chantel and Pedro, 
It's the one thing that was constantly driving them apart. Oh, your voice is getting on my nerves. Okay. Estoy harta de escucharte decir mil veces lo mismo. Your voice is getting on my nerves. Calm it down. Pipe down right now. Pedro, who's originally from the Dominican Republic, was overly concerned with his family's well-being, often putting them before his bride-to-be. When the two families finally met, things did not go well, with Pedro's mother famously serving Chantel's family chicken feet. You want the chicken feet? Pedro comes out with his plate of chicken feet and chicken necks, and in my head, I'm just like, what the hell? They're just spitting in our faces. The families would continue to war like Montagues and Capulets, with Chantel and Pedro's sister Nicole infamously feuding in particular, which only made fans hate the couple all the more. Chantel tells us that you, when she left out the door, said, good and... Thank God. Thank God. Para ti. Si. De que habla. Number six, David and Annie. There were red flags in this relationship from the start. What with David's lack of funds, drinking problem, and mooching habits. The 48-year-old American met the much younger Annie while living in Thailand, and despite having no money, was able to borrow enough off his friend Chris to make Annie his wife. If you want somebody that already has a million dollars in the bank, I'm sorry, I don't. Yeah, every, every lady wants. Yes. And do you sure you can take care well, of me? Sure how we're gonna try. Yes. Yeah. Like we said, flags. Things only got worse once the two got to America, with David's drinking problem continuing to cause issues. I don't like when he drunk. I feel bad, I feel so sad. I don't know why he do that to me. It's my first time in America and he chose to control himself. The fact that Annie appears to be an incredibly sweet young woman only makes it harder to watch. And we hope for her sake that she comes to her senses sooner rather than later. Damn it, he's the dust old father. <laughs> we have to get ready, we have to go so much. He's not perfect. Yeah. He's not handsome. Number five, Darcy and Jesse. This couple appeared on the first two seasons of the 90 Day Fiance spinoff before the 90 Days. However, just because a couple is brought back for an additional season does not necessarily mean they're fan favorites. What photo did you have? on your team profile? Uh, from what I remember, I had a uh, selfie photo, I believe. I was a lot younger, um, mostly cropped from <laughs> the midsection up, you know. The problem with Darcy and Jesse is that Darcy seemed to be genuinely looking for love, even going out of her way to spend time with Jesse's family, while Jesse appeared as a manipulative control freak who loved his abs more than his bride-to-be. She was stepping on my shoe, trying to put them on, stepping on it. Absolutely madness. I wasn't trying to ruin your shoe, it was just my foot was cold. But ultimately, they both had their issues, and certainly did not bring out the best in each other. You really switch your attitudes. Come on. You're not my boss, you can't tell me what to do. Relax, all right? Number four. And Fisa and George. When he tells me that he can't really afford these expensive things now, I feel like he's breaking promises that he gave me before I arrived. There are so many things to hate about this couple, we don't even know where to start. George was looking for a sexy young bride, and Anfisa was looking for a rich American to provide for her and eventually get her a green card. I am beautiful and I like nice clothes, nice shoes, nice purses. So I expect him to pay for all that. Shockingly, this caused major problems for the couple, with Anfisa keying George's car and George lying about his wealth and criminal past. The couple continued to fight, leading to more erratic behavior from Anfisa and ultimately a long-term criminal conviction for George. When your relationship is built on lies, contempt, and physical violence, the chances of it ending well aren't good. What? Where are you going? I'm going to get my wallet. Bring me my red bag with my makeup. Can I have a key? Yes, you can have a key. Number three, 
Paul and Corrine. Are you excited to meet me? Are you excited I'm coming to Brazil? I no. don't understand. Oh, no. She doesn't understand. That's not good. Let's forget for a moment that Paul and Corrine had built-in issues due to their lack of a common tongue and focus on the former's bizarre behavior. Oh. Okay. Okay. Poop water. <laughs> Upon arriving in Brazil, Paul was quick to demonstrate a stunning lack of empathy for Corrine's culture. He straight up refused to learn Portuguese and often acted in a controlling manner towards his girlfriend. So you're suggesting that I've had sex with other men? <sighs> oh, and to top it all off, he was hiding a criminal past from her the whole time. Everything about this relationship was cringeworthy, from Paul's swimming condom to his insanely awkward marriage proposal. Number two, Nicole and Azen. How this couple made it onto not one, but two seasons of 90 Day Fiance, we will never understand. There's some stuff. I wanted to change up, like to go to gym and like to not be lazy. And... I'm not lazy. Sometimes you are. Their relationship was dysfunctional for a multitude of reasons, not the least of which was Nicole's outright refusal to change. She never attempted to learn more about Azen's culture or religious customs and openly scoffed at things that confused or irritated her about them. Oh, and let's not forget the time she promised Azen she'd try to lose weight after he called her lazy, also not great, but still had a secret stash of junk food hidden away. I'm just lazy. <laughs> That's why you're lazy. I know that I'm not perfect, but also she, she promised that she would be different and be healthy and eat good food. Nicole was hard to watch on a weekly basis. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some dishonorable mentions. I really want to propose to Abby before I leave here, but I still question her relationship with her ex-boyfriend, Chris. Until my questions are answered, I can't in good conscience ask her to marry me. We can discuss it when the time comes because it just makes me angry. I'm not taking you to Spain. I'm asking you to like just go to another state. Then I see a picture of a woman with his son. This was his son's mother, very much alive and not dead. I reached out to her and she told me that Loa was in Vietnam studying business. And that is when I realized that I've been catfished. You're just crazy. Can you, can I say one thing to you without you spinning it around right back on me? I'm just saying that you just need to stop being spiteful. I heard you the I first time you said that. Where am I? Maybe level two, no. level three? You are equal footing with my daughter. No, that's not priority means. Because she is family too. That's not priority means. Priority always number one. Number one, Mohammed and Danielle. She hide things on me just because she's worrying that I will leave and I feel seem like it's impossible to change it. I think that I'm wasting my time. Of all the untrustworthy people to appear on 90 Day Fiance and its spin-offs, it's Mohammed that comes out on top, hands down. He lied constantly, specifically about his job status, but was surprisingly honest when it came to his thoughts about Danielle's looks, which he deemed acceptable. I like Danielle because she's honest. She's caring about me a lot. If we talk about physically relationship, sure I think about it and Danielle is acceptable for me. Most believe he used Danielle to get a green card, feigning love while refusing to become intimate with her. Since we got married, we've had many ups and we've had many downs. Muhammad has brought up divorce, and it's usually when we're fighting. He took it so far as to not even kiss her on the lips on their wedding day. Shortly after the wedding, Mohammed left Danielle for another woman, and she's been trying to get him kicked out of the country ever since. This is something fans agree with, with some going so far as to create a petition to get him deported. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.